Hello and welcome to another Starbase video. In this video we will be looking at how we can use YOL to improve our ship. In this video we'll be going over three different scripts that will all seek to improve our ship in a different way. We'll be looking at a fuel efficiency script that will increase the longevity of our fuel rods. We'll be looking at a forwards backwards thrust script that will allow us to control our forwards and backwards thrust on one lever. And last but not least we'll be looking at how we can install ice into our ship which is the in-game player made GPS system. Now before we get into all of that, we first need to understand how we can install YOL to a ship. So behind me we see we ha I have built a miner for this demonstration and we have a few different parts here in front of us that all are uh, in some way connected to YOL. Now the most simple way to install YOL on your ship is to add a simple chip socket. Now these YOL chip sockets um, accept one chip at a time as you can see, we can place it right on top like that. Make sure ship, uh, snapping is enabled. And then also allows us to edit the chip without having to remove the chip. So as we can see, there is a little lock on it. To unlock this chip, we need to hold mouse button 1, or left mouse button, or F. And then we pull down on the lock. We can see it's starting to move. And then when we release, it will unlock. Now, real quick, you'll realize that it's going to be very hard to edit um, this board from where we currently are. So how to fix this is we press escape, go into settings, go into gameplay, scroll down to camera and enable zoom in on YOL chips when editing and zoom in on YOL chips after unlocking. Now what we'll see is when we hold F to drag this down, we'll zoom into this board and we can press tab to unlock our mouse and start editing this chip. Now moving on to another way of uh, adding YOL to your ship, we have these rack, uh, racks, these YOLO racks. Now there's, uh, these are just normal roll YOLO racks. We can stack them on top of each other. We can stack them sideways. We can stack them even left and right. We can stack them upside down however we please. Um, and for these racks, we have three different parts. We have the two slots rack. We have a three slot rack. And we have the chip reader slash editor. Now, the two slot, every uh, rack system requires at least one two slot rack, as this will allow the entire system to have a cable connection. Um, YOL, uh, both the YOL socket and the racks require cable connection to them. As we can see, we can connect this one like this. Just quickly make a square to show you guys. And this one can we can connect through all of these. So that's how we connect them to the rest of our cable system. Uh, but what's important to know is that each one of these rack systems requires at least one rack to contain a two slot so we can actually get some cable connection. Let me remove this real quick. Then we have two different chips. You realize they're a different color and that is because this is an advanced chip and this is a basic chip. Um, now these can get inserted into the old chip just like that and the difference between an advanced and basic chip, if you're wondering, is that a advanced one has access to more complex functions. So anyways, we can see that these are now connected. And uh, yeah, this is how the racks work. Now that we've gone through all these parts, uh, we can remove them and start looking at the scripts that we will be installing. Now I already have them all installed, but we'll quickly drag them out to take a look at them and go through each one. So first and foremost, we'll be looking at the fuel efficiency script. Now all these scripts can be found in the description. Um, and yeah, so the first script is the fuel efficiency script and it's this one. So what you want to do is you want to copy this into line one like that. And this will basically make it so whenever our batteries are not full, the generators, the generators will be running. Now this helps us uh, because it means that if our, uh, batteries are full, we don't need to produce any power because that power has nowhere to go. So it will turn off the generators as long as our batteries are full. So, by simply slotting this in, we can see what will happen to our generators. Normally, generators uh, work at max effect, so 100 out of 100. And now they will be running at 0 to 0 0.001 uh, to basically be controlling the um, chamber rate. This is going to save a lot of the fuel rods and make them last a lot longer. 
Um, now, before we move on to the next script, it's important to recognize that there's sometimes where you don't want your fuel rods to be zero despite your batteries being full. For example, if we're using a mining laser, and our battery power gets low, you'll see that it will take a long time for these reactors, if we look into the fuel rate, it will take a long time for these unit rates to meet the limit. And this might cause us to run out of power a lot more quickly, and we basically want to be ignoring uh, the limit. To do this, we want to basically add an override button, as you can see we have here. Now, to make sure this override button works, we're going to want to do a few things. First of all, um, we we're going to use a modified version of a script. You can find the modified version of a script in the description below. And how that looks like is, if we press Edit Script, um, it's going to be a little bit longer. We just copy it in here. There we go. So this one will now basically require the override button to be um, inactive to run. And now if we slot this in, just like that, we will see that right now you can see they're still blinking, meaning that they're going from 0 to 0, 0, 001. But if we now hit the override button, go back, we'll see that they're now permanently red and that these unit rates is high increasing rapidly. Now this is useful if you have a ship that might be using a, a large amount of power in a very short duration and you want your fuel rods to be already running at max when you do so. For example, if you have mining lasers attached to your ships, I would recommend having an override button so you can make sure you're generating as much power as possible. So, to set up the override button, you simply want to name one of the buttons override with a capital O, um, set the on state to zero, set the off state value to one, and set the button style to one. Anyways, um, that is the fuel efficiency script. Next, we will be moving on to the forward backwards thruster script. So, on most ships, you'll only have one lever for controlling your forwards. Now, this will usually say, uh, this would usually, usually say FCU forward. On some ships, you'll have two levers going backwards and forwards. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing this and replacing it with a metal lever base so we can get the script to work. So what you want to do is you want to remove this lever. You want to insert this lever. Make sure that the this value is set to FCU forward. If you have a cruise button, you want to make sure that cruise is this option right here. It's normally called, I believe, lever centering speed. So you want to rename this to cruise rename this first value to FCU forward, then you want to insert your lever. Now it's not snapping, and that's because there are some cables in the way, so we'll quickly temporarily remove those. Then we'll insert the lever. Now don't forget to bolt it, because else it will fly off, and then you will not be very happy. There we go. Now, uh, the script for this is also very simple. It is simply FCU backwards is equal to the negative of FCU forwards. And basically what this means is that when FCU forwards is negative, our FCU backwards will be positive and vice versa. Now, if we slot this in, where did it go? Great. This can be a little bit hard to move around sometimes in the editor. Just slot it right in there. We can now see that if we hold control, our ship will go backwards. And if we hold forwards, the ship will go forwards. And backwards. Taking a long time to decelerate. And forwards. But anyways, um, that's all for that script. And now we're going to move on to the last, but definitely not least, ISAN. So, what you want to do first is you want to head over to this website. ISAN.to slash ISAN.pdf. You'll find the link in the description. Once you have this PDF, you'll be taken to uh, the first page. You want to go down to page 5, and here it will go through how to set it up. Now we're going to be looking at ISAN Mono in this example, but if you want to set up ISAN Quad, it's very simple. All you have to do is... Let's go back down here. All you have to do is set up your receivers in a square like this. Anyways, going back here. What we want to do is we're going to want to go into Starbase. We want to place a receiver somewhere. Uh, make sure it has a hardpoint connection. 
and this hardpoint has a cable connection. You don't need a pipe connection for this. Anyways, once you've attached your receiver to a hardpoint, you want to go into the, uh, the receiver and you want to go to page 2. So 2 out of 2 up here. And you want to change signal stream to A and you want to change target message to AT. And then last but not least, you also want to make sure the listen angle is set to 180 and not 45. Once you've done that, you've done everything you need to do in the receiver. All you have to do now is change your panel name, panel value, to underscore, just like that. Now, um, if you also want to make, sure, make your speed value appear, meaning that you want to see the speed of your ship, what you want to do is you want to go into uh, ISAT, the app. Uh, once you've set this up, we'll move on to the code now instead. What we want to do is we want to go into this and you'll see there's a bunch of lines. Now these won't be in the description, these will be on the link. So you want to paste one by one, you want to paste all these lines into your uh, chip. If you want to have your speedometer, you need to be using an advanced chip. But once you've added all those lines, you then want to just insert this chip into your uh, rack or chip socket, depending on what you're using. Once this is in, um, if you want to activate your speedometer, if you have an advanced chip, you want to change this SO value to zero. You see, I've already done it. Normally it will be one, so you just want to remove the one and place a zero instead. Once you've done that, we can then press F5 and we can see this in-game. You'll see here that it says booting ISAN and then it will display our chords. Now it'll take a few seconds for it to calibrate. Once it's calibrated, you'll see the speed is still completely wrong, so we're just going to wait for that to... There we go. So our speed is clearly zero because we're not moving. Let's move to the max speed and see what happens. This does not update instantly. This will take a little bit to update. So you can see it's now three. I know this ship can go at 110 meters per second. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to showcase that. And there we go. This isn't 100% a, uh, a accurate, but it's a lot more accurate than nothing. And it can effectively just show you your location and your speed, which is a very nice feature to have from one advanced chip. But anyways, uh, that's it for this video. Please make sure to like if this helped you out and subscribe if you want to see more Starbase tutorials and Starbase videos in the future. If you have any ideas for any other tutorials or anything else you would like to learn how to do, please just leave a comment with it and uh, if enough people ask for it, I'll probably make it. Anyways, that'll be all for me this time and thank you for watching.